Shalom, first and foremost, I want to give all the praises and the glory to Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah Bashim Al Rakakwadash. Um, double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone and salute to the out that is pushing his truth, the North Sincerity, Shalom. And um, and even unto those that's learning, listening, and watching the North Sincerity as well. It's the brother Monica come. Uh, this is gonna be a second video um concerning um the root of sin which stems all the way back of Adam. And, um, you know, as we believe, if you can perceive what we believe, we believe that Yahweh Shai uh, is the reincarnation of the main Adam that the Lord was dealing with, right along with Eve. You know, it took one man to be disobedient and let everybody to sin. And this time, it's going to be one man that's going to bring the sons of God back to righteousness again, based on him being obedient. And when Yahweh Shai, when the spirit of Yahweh Shai came back in, in, in the Roman Empire, because he is a spirit, he came back to simply redo the wrongs that he has done. Okay? And, uh, you know, basically... This is kind of a meat subject matter, man, because most people don't even understand what I'm talking about. Because um, according to Christians and stuff like that, which, you know, a lot of Christians are carnal minded and they don't really understand the scriptures. And, um, you know, and, and others that think they know the scriptures, you know, one element that they're missing is, is the, uh, the idea of reincarnation. And reincarnation is, is very real. And it's in the scriptures. And this is why many will not will never understand exactly why Yahweh Shai died on the cross. Okay? And we're the only men that understand why he had to die on that cross. Yeah, he died on the cross for the sins of the people. Oh yes. Okay, that goes without saying, but he also died for what he has done also. Going all the way back to when he was Solomon and going all the way back to when he was Adam, as we believe. Okay? And 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 uh by that being the case, I want to um go backwards before the death of the cross and as to why he died on the cross due to his even his own sins, he was obedient. Okay, he stuck to the script. All he did was is simply Fulfill prophecy, and that was the intention of Yahweh Shai was to simply fulfill prophecy, and this is why Yahweh Shai he didn't, um, you know, he didn't, uh, he didn't go against the grain in terms of the script. You know, he went accordingly with the script, and now, being that he was obedient unto death, now many will be made righteous, beginning with the elect. So it took one man's disobedience, so much. That sin entered into the world. And now by the obedience of one. Many will be made righteous. So let's. Jump right into Romans the fifth chapter. And then I'm going to. Um, as usual go from scripture to scripture. This is Romans 5 verse 12. It says wherefore. As by one man sin entered into the world. And death by sin. And so death passed upon all men. For that all have sinned. And that's what happened all around. You know um. Because one man sinned in the eyes of the Most High, that root or that element of sin grew to an infirmity. And this is why I said in my last video, the greatest infirmities above all infirmities is the infirmity of the flesh warring with the spirit, which is disharmonizing. And being that that is a disharmonizing situation, this is why we can know longer be 100% righteous. This is why we could never amount to being completely perfect because there's a war within us, the flesh and the spirit. All right? And, and that all stems back to what Adam did. So we bear the sins of Adam. Okay? And, you know, when you think of sin... All sin ever did to mankind was downgrade man. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. I want to um read 
Second Ezra uh, three, verse. Start from uh, twenty, and yet took us thou not away from them a wicked heart, that thy law might bring forth fruit in them. Twenty one for the first Adam. This is the point, bearing a wicked heart transgressed, and was overcome, and so be all they that are born of him. Exactly. So all those that are born of him, they're going to bear the infirmity. Because of what Adam did. So let's read this. Thus infirmity was made permanent. And the law. Also in the heart of the people. With the benignity of the root. So that the good the part of the way. And the evil abode still. And what did Paul say? Paul said. It's not I that do wickedly. It's, it's the fact that. Uh, I am sold under sin. And there is no good thing. In me. Due to the fact that Paul was in the flesh. Alright. And like I said in my last video. What is within the flesh. Is sin. And that's all due because. What Adam did. Alright. So now what I'm going to do. I want to go back to Romans 5. Verse uh, 13. For unto the law sin was in the world. And what world was that? The world of Israel. Let's start in verse 12 again. Wherefore by one man sin entered into the world. And sin ultimately entered into the world of the sons of God. Because it all stems right back to these people here. You know? And the sons of God are still here to this very moment in time. We just call in ourselves Israelites now. Alright? Because the spirits never die and perish. It's the bodies that die and perish. And the same sons of gods that were during the time of Genesis 5 to uh, Genesis 6 and beyond are here to this very moment in time. But we're living in a downgradable version of what we used to be. Simply because of sin of one man. Okay. So now what I'm going to do... Um, let me read verse 12 again. It says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him that was to come? Romans uh, 5 verse 15, but not of, as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of the Most High, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahweh Shai, have abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one, to condemnation, exactly. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. And so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. And that's the last resort. The end result is going to be we will be we will become immortals. And therefore, we will be under that new covenant in the book of Hebrews, the eighth chapter. And we will become righteous. And this is all going to take place when we're saved. And when we're saved, immediately, we're going to be changed. We're going to be restored as we once were as the sons of God. All right. And I want to show you as to why I say um, the flesh or the, uh, the, the infirmity of um, which is sin, which dwelleth in the flesh, which is fighting up against the spirit. It's the greatest of, of them all. The reason why I say this is simply because when 
mankind, or especially the sons of God, when the sons of God transgressed against the Most High, what happened? Men became degradable. And I want to show you this. This is uh, Genesis 6, verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of the Most High saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, in other words, beautiful, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Okay? And the Lord did not want the sons of God to merge with the sons of uh, to, to merge with the uh, the sons and daughters of men. He simply wanted to keep his people pure. But what did the sons of God do? They they uh, married the sons the uh, the daughters of men. That's what they did. And this is where the transgression came, and this is why this happened. Genesis six verse three, and the Lord said, "My spirit shall not always strive with man." For that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be in 120 years. Okay, so instead of us living damn near a thousand years, as you can read in the book of Genesis 5, just one chapter back, you'll see that you had men and the, the uh, a man that I can only remember, his name is Methuselah. He lived, he pretty much reached a thousand years, but you had men that were living 700 years, 800 years, 900 years. And that kind of sort of thing. So we were not our greatest. And now we're at our lowest. Simply due to what? Sin. And this is why it says verse 4. It says there were giants on the earth in those days. And also after that. When the sons of the Most High came in unto the daughters of men. And that they bare children to them. And the same became mighty men where, which were of old men of renown. Okay, so it says, verse 5, And the Most High saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Why? Because of the flesh. Going all the way back to 2 Ezra 3, verse 22, Thus infirmity was made permanent, and the law also in the heart of the people, with the malignity of the root, so that the good departed the way, and the evil abode still. And this is why men became evil. Because that element of sin was growing and growing in the flesh. So just imagine now, and this is what, we're talking about almost 5,000 years ago. So how much more have we become degradable? We're in a time such as like never before, where man is, has waxed and worse and worse and worse. And what the Lord did to add insult into injury is let the man of sin rule. And all Esau ever did, being that he's the, he's the, uh, the devil that the Bible speaks of, or they are the devil that the Bible speaks of, and that they are of a wicked spirit, they've perpetuated and, and, and elevated sin to a whole other level when they came into power. All right. Being that we're at the last paganistic empires and the last captivities of a more, we've now come full circle. And this is why Yahweh Shah is going to come back to set the record straight and to bring us back to that level as we once were before. Okay. We're going to move on and we're going to get Jeremiah 30, verse 17, because eventually. When it's all said and done, Yahweh Shah is going to come back and restore all of us, the children of Israel, beginning with the elect, back to what we once were. Because going all the way back to 2nd Ezra 3, um, Ezra's likened our situation that sin dwelleth within us as an infirmity. And I also said it in my last video and I have and I haven't read that scripture in, in a long time. So it is definitely a disease where we are having to deal with this eternal battle concerning God uh, the flesh warring against the spirit. And the reason why the flesh is warring and doing its own thing against the spirit because there's an element of sin that dwells within the flesh. And Yahweh Shah is going to take care of that and we're going to be changed of a twinkling of an eye 
And we're going to be the sons of God again. So we're going to be 100% perfect. Plus, we're going to be under that new covenant spoken of in the book of Hebrews, same chapter. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to read Jeremiah 30, verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, save the Lord, Yahweh, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion whom no man seeketh after. And not only are we going to be healed and restored, but we're going to return back to our land. All right, and, and this is why also when we, when we move forward, what we're going to do is we're going to read Revelations 21, uh, verse 1, all the way down to verse 2. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High out of heaven, prepared as a bride and adorned for her husband. So... John saw the new Jerusalem. Is this a city? Is, there, is, is this a new crop of Israelites? No, this is the same people that he has chosen, but he's come to re restore them all over again. And we look up the word new, the Greek is uh, kainos. The Greek word is kainos for the word new. And it means to be fresh or refresh. So Yahweh Shah is going to make new, fresh again, the elect, and then the nation of Israel will begin to follow that same, um, uh, will be on the righteousness. So that's exactly what we got coming in the near distant future. All right. So there you have it. So let's get another scripture here. Um, Isaiah 65, verse 22. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands. Exactly. So we're going we're gonna to be brought back to that God-like status again. We're going to be known as the giants spoken of in the book of Genesis 6. Okay? And we're going to live a thousand years and evermore. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to read Isaiah 65, verse 22. And it says, Shlakia, it reads, They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands. So in other words, we're going to live a thousand years and evermore. All right? Everything's going to revert all the way back to how it was from the beginning for the sons of God as well. Because think about it, the sons of God were in the flesh and they were living for a long time. They were, live, they were down there reaching a thousand years. So how much more when we, when we enter into immortality, which the word immortality simply means not dying. So we're not going to die. So shall it be for us as it was in the beginning. We're going to be known as the sons of God. So um, that's all I have for you, brothers. Um, hopefully you edified and hopefully you learned something from this lesson. So with that, I want to uh, close this video out and I'll say shalom.